Welcome to my coronation. I am being coronated in chicken in half hour. Am I allowed to stream being the coronation? Hey, I watched the coronation. But yes, yes, I am allowed to stream. I'm also allowed to pretend that I am the king. What about Phoenix left? Yo, got. I mean, I'm sure we'll find Phoenix left at some point. But as your king today, we're, we're getting on. Oh, what happened to you? I say, like, any of you can actually see my screen. I did my part. I watched the coronation. I laughed at every tiny little thing that I could. Like, when they put the rug over him. And the fact that one of the rods he had to hold had a seagull on it. And they just had, like, a golden seagull in general. Like, what the hell? And the fact that when they put his crown on, they kind of had to, like, screw it down. And when they went to put their crown on Camilla, she was kind of like, get away, get away from me, get away from me. I don't want, I don't want this crown, get away from me. <laughs> it was good times. Unlike what's happening to our poor fellow here, Harry Falls. I remembered his name. I do not need to be shouted at about forgetting names. Wait, let me drop me. Actually, I'm going to take the filter off me as well for today because it's making the crown look weird. Oh, no, it looks fine, actually. You need to be able to see my royal scepter. And I guess we can bring back law as well, but we'll, we'll lower, lower, lower law. That's a game. Law? Get here. My loyal, loyal, lawful subject down here. All right. I've finished messing around. And in half an hour, I'll mess around some more because I need some food. February 16th, 1.14pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number four. Mr. Falls, I... Oh, good. I'm sorry. I I I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You're real good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime. Yes, but there's one more thing. There's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. Uh, obstacle? Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill the policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster his I'm trying not to look at him, guys. I can't look at Armando. If I look at Mon Armando, even, if I look at Armando, I won't be able to read anymore. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never lie. Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. That day, five years ago, I dream of it every day. This picture, it reminds me everything. It reminds me everything. Bridge looks same, just like then, five years ago. Like it could fall apart, fall apart any minute. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Ha! Sorry, buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It's true, I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. Y your g girlfriend? Huh? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Dahlia Hawthorne, Valerie's little sister. What? 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 Are you serious? The girl. Let her go. Oh, I like this. Shut up. C come closer, and I kill her. Sorry. We are not gonna get the chance. The detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. 
At first, I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but it was to protect her little sister. I can understand why she did it. Wrong. No protect sister. Valerie betray me. Betray us. What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything. All lies. All make-believe. Kidnapping too. And make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia, my girlfriend, my love, my teen angel. Ugh. Did he actually say my teen angel? He's seen one too many soap operas. I do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says? Ha hold on a minute. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by, yeah, me and Dahlia, and Valerie too. Valerie was in on it. Dahlia's family rich, jewelry business. We get one draw, that's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note, we sent to her dad. Asked for two million dollar diamond, tell him to make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer because she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, all right. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman. That woman, Valerie, she do it for real. She shoot at me for real, me and Dahlia. I was shot in the arm, Dahlia. She jumped in the river. Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? Wait. Wait. I knew it! I knew it! Dalton's still alive! I was thinking, didn't... Thingy write something to someone saying her that the whole truth must come out? Was it Dahlia? I was right! Oh! Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when he decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. I was right! I was right! Of course I'm right! I'm the king! That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the roaring river 40 feet below. These five years, all I wonder is why? 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 Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forgot that she looked like, so I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her. Just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth. That's all. So that's why. That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls, where is it? Huh? Where's what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. Huh? You don't know? No way. Really. I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? That day, on the bridge, Dahlia put it in backpack. Now gone with Dahlia. Gone forever. Into Eagle River. You know, sometimes my memory is really weird. Also, I never did the fucking hydrate or the stretch. I'm sorry, Ward. Let me do that right now when I'm talking about this. Here's your hydrate. One thing I don't get about my memory is sometimes like this, I remember everything, you know? Like, like how I remembered about this thing that I read once, you know? I do not know. Oh, let me turn sound off for you. But, like, I can't remember. Like, if I read something, I tend to forget what I've read, like, two minutes later. It's so bizarre. It's memory, isn't it? Uh... I think I could get away with ignoring the redeems. 100%. That's exactly what happened. Fuck Warded. No redeems for Warded. I will openly scam him. 
Right. Let me do my stretches. If I do my right hand first, then I can carry on reading. It's just weird what my memory decides it's going to remember, you know? Like, oh, I remember that she talked to someone and it's probably going to be Dahlia, right? And then, like, I forget how to, you know, sometimes you can go onto a second page in the areas. Even though there's a button saying slide, press L1. Well, I won't think about redeeming things then. Wow. Wow. I take it back. You can redeem stuff. I will do it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Am I not doing it? My loyal subjects being unloyal. Spend your fucking points, nerd. It disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back in now. We're about to we're right, about ready to go. Mr. Force, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne. Never found her. My sweet Dahlia. You never found her. Swallowed by river, gone. Dahlia, my teen angel. Your teen angel. How old was she anyway? Just 14. But 14? I guess you were Robin Craig just before diamonds. She plans to fake kidnap and disappears into the river of rock. River rock, work to mill. Man oh man, angels these days. Wait, how old is he? Force takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Wait. I'm guessing this is one of the, these things that I'm just not meant to think about, right? I'm just not meant to put any thought into the age difference. I'm kind of guessing the age of consent in Japan might be... Like 13 or something, right? Sorry, I'm just finishing off the Finch stuff. After having my mind blown. I just needed to finish the Finch. Finchy boy. Finchy boy. Horse takes a fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Is Daddy Hawthorne an angel? Is she really a... It's time, kitten. It looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. The training wheels come off now, Mia. You gotta strike while the iron is hot. That's one of my rules, remember it. He is so handsome. But there is that. Now that I've got that image in my mind of, um, what do you call it? Handsome Squidward. The, the, the visor needs to be there, kind of, for me now. It's a little sad that I need to have his visor now because, you know, Handsome Squidward is just in my brain. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. Witness, are you feeling better? Y yes, Your Honor. I I'll try my best. Smile. Evil. Hmm. You're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her client off the hook. However, to try to pin the crime on an innocent student is... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime, that's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm, it's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Wait a minute. Okay, I know you're not going to answer one way or the other, Warded. That's fair, that's fair, because you'd like me to figure these out and then be surprised. My big guess is this is Dahlia. And I feel dumb because I can't remember if she was called Dahlia in the first case or if she was Melissa in the first case. I wish I could remember the first case. It's certainly hard to imagine this woman is a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figure that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Bay, do you have any evidence of a motive? 
Uh, yes, of course, I think. Ha! You're still acting as tame as a kitten, kitten. Mr. Armando, listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. No, keep grinning. Um, excuse me, may I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course, Mr. Judge is ready anytime you like. I'd like, I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? Th that's why. I, I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Hmm, I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. It looks like this witness is a real professional. Well, what do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her, click, she lights right up. Very well then. Let's hear what the witness has to say. Oh, give me a second. Something is making everything go red on my screen. Let me... Let me put down Chrome as well. That might help. Very well then, let's hear what the witness has to say. Mr. Foster's history. I, I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, I had never even been to Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago, or kidnapping a poor girl, I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Hmm. Out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. Y you bet. Somehow, I have to tie it to this case. Hold it! Hold it! So, what country were you living in, then? We were all living abroad, but after my parents were killed, it was a brutal civil war. She had to try to make her way back home alone. I lost everything. I didn't even have any personal identification. What kind of sub story is this? What do I do? Should I press her for details? I feel like I'm gonna get in trouble if I press her for more details with things like this. There's nothing I can do about her claim to have lost all her identification. All I can do is wait to find some other evidence about her real identity. Very well then, Miss Foster. Please proceed. I'm guessing if my theory is correct, she's called Foster because, like... Foster... fostering foster families? You'd have a different name, maybe, if you were in a... Well, you don't, but... Like, that's where my mind's going, is kind of Foster. Foster's beer. Not gonna lie. I'm a cheap ass. I love Foster's beer. <laughs> Especially when it comes in a glass. I oh, know I'm not a glass. In a glass bottle. So what made you decide to go to Eagle Mountain anyway? I just love being outdoors. Picnics, hiking, you know, that sort of thing. You don't look much like a hiker to me, but you do look like a digger of sorts. But Eagle Mountain is a two-hour drive from here. No trains run through there. There are plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. Well, I went there once with the college hiking club. I fell in love with its stark, desolate beauty and its cold yet romantic gloominess. She said she'd never been there! Didn't know you were such a goth. By the way, what's the name of your college? The prosecution objects to any question involved the witness's private life. All that matters is that she is a material witness to a crime. The witness doesn't need to respond to questions that are clearly malicious and intent. Thank you. She's really gone too far. Hmm. Miss Faye, you're trading on thin ice here. I hardly said anything. Talk about sensitive. Can of Foster's not good enough? Foster's is fucking amazing. But I like anything out of a glass bottle better. Like Coke. I drink so much Coke. But you give it to me out of a glass bottle and I, I, I'm in love. I remember they did, like, a Foster's with, like, lemonade at one point. I liked it, and then kind of went off it. <laughs> that That's the story. I, ha I liked it for a little bit, and then it was like, actually, this isn't very nice. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Perhaps, but your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only have you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the trunk of the car. Well, th that's... 
stop objecting to me. Don't wiggle your finger at me seductively, Mr. Edgeworth. Unfortunately, Miss Fair, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the police station once to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that, at that time, an officer showed her this photo. Hmm, that seems like a rather serious mistake. Ha! That's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. But that's not fair. That wicked inmate. I'll never be able to forget the horrible day. A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why he harbors such a deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. Forgot his own guilt? Wait a minute. Let me just move everything around, because I always forget to move everything before I start stream. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. Seems rather forgetful, your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client. He forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. I can't remember if we mentioned the scarf. I think we did. But I kind of... I do kind of want to press that one. That one doesn't feel like one that I'm going to get in trouble for pressing. But I do feel I know the answer to that. You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What did you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was, she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I'd been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Ford's reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with the last statement? Your Honour, what the witness just said just now was tremendously important. I'd like it added to the official testimony. Prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps to further prove that point. Hmm. N no, that's not why I... I'm having it added anyway. Enough, witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. What do you mean by lucky? Well, it's February now. Everyone was wearing scarves. If I had accidentally worn a white scarf like he said, then you yourself might have been killed. Hmm, that would have been a terrible loss for this world. Ha, it looks like you pressed too hard this time, kitten. Mr. Armando, keep looking around you and you're going to lose sight of the finish line. Justice is blind, but she's not deaf. Sometimes you have to know when not to talk. Shut up. You knew about that incident, but weren't you out of the country until the year before last? Well, I saw a report about the escaped convict on the news. He had an in-depth report about his whole history. She was still living abroad five years ago, is that right? Yes. I can't let her get away with these lies. Listen to me, she's neck deep in this whole thing. Somehow, you're just going to have to get her to show the court her true self. So, what country were you living in then? We were all living abroad. Oh, wait a minute, this is the first lot. Wait. This is just the first lot. But she did, didn't her statement say that she'd never been to Eagle Mountain? Because literally, until I entered college, I'd never been. Oh, wait a minute. No, all right. She, she explained it in that sentence. All right. All right. Just ignore me. Just ignore me. Uh, so it's going to be this. I guess we just object with the scarf. Witness, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, you're talking about this scarf right here, eh? Y yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. I've got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. What, white? This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. 
but it certainly doesn't look white to me. Oh. Alright. I got there in the end. Well, it was foggy that day and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. Thank you for the lurk, Sarah. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but there's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is... This. Witness. Have you ever seen the snow? No, no I, uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Hmm, I wonder about that. Well, what do you mean? This note shows Mr. Ford's instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear a white scarf for identification. White scarf? Ah! Witness, you knew what this note said. And it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf. Uh, uh, uh. Well, Miss Foster? No! Yeah! Maybe! Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that were no, that knew were quite limited. Oh, wait a minute. I've just had another thought. Edgeworth had never been beaten before Phoenix, right? Before Phoenix Wright came around, he'd never been beaten. So we're going to lose this case, right? Terry Falls is one. The person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say one more person? That's right, a person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yup. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... Dahlia. Your thoughts exactly? And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There is her, there is her name right there. What, what's this? So who is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne? Huh. <sighs> Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The d dead? Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You, you don't mean... I, I'm now pretty certain that... Melissa was called Dahlia in the first case. And if this is Mia's first case, that means the Phoenix Wright one comes after this, right? Which would mean... Maybe this one is thrown out and it's not so much that Mia loses it. Killed in a crime? You, you don't mean. Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago. If you're wanting confirmation after, can discuss. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. But when the trial's done, we can, we can have a bit of a talk about it. But that's my running theory. My running theory is, I'm pretty sure she was called Dahlia in the first case. I'm pretty sure of that now. Now it's coming, kind of coming back. Because I don't remember her being called Melissa. And I remember there being a Dahlia in the game before. So she must have been called Dahlia beforehand. And I'm pretty sure I remember that we were the first people, or Nick was the first person to be Edgeworth. But there was like the whole thing that like something happened and she ran off and she gave the poison to Nick. That's why Nick ate the poison in that case, which was the throwback in the last case, which was funny. So yeah, what I'm getting at is I feel this case isn't going to end in a win or if it does end like without a loss, it's going to be like a mistrial or something so that Edgeworth can be unbeaten. But I could be wrong about the Edgeworth thing. To be fair, I could be wrong on the Edgeworth thing. When she fell off of Dusty Bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. Also, this is very Sherlock Holmes of them, you know? However, her corpse was never found. 
Because this is how he killed off Sherlock Holmes. And then everyone wanted Sherlock Holmes to come back. So you had to be like, oh yeah, he, he, he fell into the water, but he was fine. Smile. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Right in that. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I like that one more. That one was good. That one, that one... ...deserves some claps. I believe that's the same age you are. Ah! Even you can... Miss Fay, you're not saying... But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. What? What? Ha! Nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit and run arsonist. I, I understand. If I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now is my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth squirm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Witness? Just who are you anyway? I, I, I'm... I didn't think it would come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, witness. Yes, I understand. What, what? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an admission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't? You don't mean... Yes, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What, what did he say? Ha, it looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way, but then why? If you hadn't revealed his secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Right, but... If that's Dahlia Hawthorne and she's not dead, that means our guy can't be tried for murder or can't be on death row for murder anymore, right? Like, I know logic doesn't come into Ace Attorney games, but in reality, if the person you're on death row for killing is standing in court to testify, you cannot be done for her murder anymore, right? So now we just... <laughs> so. I mean, he still might go down for murdering her sister, but... But, but, I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well, but, well, as you can see. Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. Really, Miss Faye? I must say, your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. Uh, how dare you? Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. But even worse than that, five years later, Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious, her big sister. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, well, you see, I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it around on me. Ha! I think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Uh, that wasn't me. It was this guy, this crazy coffee ad. <laughs> I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Yeah. What makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. Ugh, I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You've just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me? Huh. The rashness of youth, how charming. This coming from someone younger than me. 
Now then, let's not waste any more time. Miss Betty, what motive would this witness have for the murder of her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? It's going to be the diamond, right? It has to be the diamond. I feel like... I feel like it has to be the diamond, but I also feel like it might be too early to pick out the diamond. Like, we're just gonna throw a diamond in there. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. I feel like maybe it's that into the diamond instead of straight into the diamond. Like, you have to push them in the right direction first, you know? You can't just come out and be like, there's a diamond, you guys. Y y you judge this. There was a diamond, you see? This diamond. Well, what does the diamond got to do with anything? Well, you see, I'll backtrack now. We have, to, we have to ease his way in. So maybe it's this first? Hmm. Think about the witness. Bridge unchanged for five years. The story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. The whole truth? And nothing but the truth! There's a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. A terrific story, Miss Faye. If you like fiction, that is. Enlighten the court, Miss Faye. What was the secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Dahlia and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh, yes, I know the secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. Well, what testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things, such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Uh. Very well. I'll grant your request for further testimony. I know it'll be painful you for you. I know it will be painful for you, but can you enlighten us once more, my little my little maple leaf? Oh no. Y yes, I I I'll try. Mr. Judge. When Fix shows up, everyone needs to call her their little maple leaf, alright? Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia. But this will be the last time you hide behind your womanly walls. Five years ago. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister Valerie bought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. And that's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money, so I decided to change my identity and start a new life. At 14? Fuck you, bitch. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And we're to believe after all that she murdered her sister? Preposterous. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Faye. It, yes, Your Honor. As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle on your cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. Ha! If we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up. We've still got that info, that ace up our sleeve. I'm guessing that's my food. Give me two seconds, guys. In fact, let me put some music on for you. And go on BRB.
I see. I see you did a dumb. What dumb did you do? Let me eat my very messy food first. Oh my god, I'm getting bloody Kentucky sauce everywhere. Face tanking a la um, laser fire? That sounds like an old man thing to do. Were you around for, um, Asuna face tanking a troll in Valheim? Yeah, it was the first time we all came across a troll in Valheim. And we were like, Kudu was there, like, everyone be careful, everyone be careful. And everyone was like, either excited or freaking out. And it was like me, Sean, Kudu, Asuna, and Tony, and Leo. I can't remember if I said Leo, but Leo was there. And all you heard all of a sudden was, I'm tanking it. And like, Kudu kind of like, just started, it was like, uh, and then you just see Asuna die and he's like, no you ain't, <laughs> let's do it this way instead. And Asuna was like, well I tried. I think three of us were still streaming as well. I think Asuna, me and um, Tony were all streaming. So I got that from all three angles as well. Listen up, we still got that info, that ace of our sleeve. What info? Come on kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. The fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged. That's right, it was a fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us that in the lobby. He did. Oh, anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Sorry, I'm going to eat chips in this flashback. Yes, that is, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Neo. That's a secret. Five years ago. Yeah. They're just pushing on everything. Did you and Mr. Force have a relationship? Y yes, as a tutor. You were tutoring him, Mr. Falls? N no, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. Mr. Falls came to the house to tutor me. That makes sense. Five years ago, she was only 14. He probably came up with a kidnapping plan during that time. The Hawthorns are in the jewelry trade and are quite wealthy, you see. Hmm. Quite the clever fellow, that Mr. Falls. Did you hear him right? Did he just call Mr. Falls a clever fellow? Yeah, I was thinking that. He can barely speak English. Why are we acting like, you know, he's suddenly some fucking genius?
I heard the diamond is valued in the neighborhood of two million dollars. Two million dollars? It was still uncut, so it was about the size of a pint of milk. Hmm! A two million dollar pint of milk. I don't know what to think about that. The defendant demanded that her sister, Valerie, make the exchange. Not as a detective, of course, but as an individual. By the way, I want to ask you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why do you think he wanted to make the exchange up there on that mountain? If he ever got surrounded, it would be hard to escape. There's one thing a kidnapper wants to prevent, and that's police involvement. In a place like that, it would be easy to tell if he was being followed. With only one entrance to the mountain, he was ensuring his safety. What a wickedly clever man that Mr. Falls is. Yeah, right. It was all your plan. Anyway, Barry brought the diamond to the mountain, and... That was a dangerous thing to do, considering you were being held hostage. Yes, but actually, that saved my life. What do you mean? You see, Mr. Force was holding a knife in his right hand. Somehow, I just knew he was going to use it. I knew he was going to use that knife to kill me. That's why my sister shot him. It was to save me. Scooby out! I'd like to hear more about what happened right at that moment. Well, when Mr. Force was shot in the right arm, he let go of me. I, I was dazed. I tried to try and run away, but Mr. Falls turned, turned to grab me as well. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second, and he gave me a large bloodthirsty grin. But bloodthirsty grin? Oh. And in the next instant... I advise the court to remember that the river is 18 feet deep and incredibly swift. I, I was a strong swimmer, but I was knocked out. When I came to, I had been carried away by the river to a strange place. I'll never forget that day. The crumbling bridge, nowhere to run. Then just one little shove from behind. That was it. For my sister to catch me, I fell into the river. And that's why you hid your identity. Yes. I only told my sister. Valerie Hawthorne, eh? Yes, she's the only one who knew about me. Meanwhile, legally, this witness has been deceased for five years. I... I didn't ever want something like that to happen to me again. And that new identity was Melissa Foster, right? Yes, my sister helped me get the official paperwork taken care of. That makes sense. Without an insider's help, doing all of the paperwork would have been impossible. She was the only person left in the world I could count on. And you, you think I c c killed her? There's no way I could. Hmm. It's a moment of truth for this witness too. Once the truth about the stage kidnapping comes out, everyone in the court will know how much of a Jezebel she really is. Oh, he called her a Jezebel. I've just got to prove that kidnapping was a hoax. I'm supposed to the arm. I'm supposed to kill me for shoving me off the bridge from behind. Well, I was afraid I might be kidnapped again to my family's morning, so I decided to change my identity and start my life over the road. Um... Force was shot in the right arm, he let go of me. I was dazed, I turned to try and run away, but Mr. Falls tried to grab me as well. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second, he gave me a large bloodthirsty grin. Okay. Sorry, I'm stuffing as many chips in my mouth as I can.
If he shoved her from behind, and she turned around, right? There, there's, like, literally ground by the broken part of the bridge. She couldn't have gone backwards and survived the fall, right? The KFC that I order from has such nice chips. They are fresh potatoes. They even have their potato skin still on them. finished off in my face with chips. Sorry. One day I will eat my lunch before I stream. Addiction. You say that Mr. Force pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. But, but it's true. I felt a push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry, I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said, that's hard to believe. I should have said, that's impossible. Uh, impossible? I asked for the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge, now and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in the last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind as you have claimed, instead of being carried away by the river, You would have been smashed by the bedrock below, a most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Ah! Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. <laughs> yeah, you're right. If the events occurred just as the witnesses testified, then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Ah, uh, I, 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 uh, you see, I... Just a moment, Your Honor. It's true that the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. What? What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. That's not what she was said, though! If that's true, she would have fallen into the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? Now that you mention it, I do remember now, when I fell off the bridge, my skirt got caught on one of the bridge's sidewires. You can't be serious. Order! Order in the court! It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. What? What? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Miss Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Force panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. R ridiculous. What's so impossible about it? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. Oh. You, you, you couldn't be pushed off the side of that if you tried. I, I see. Your Honor, all of the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up about five feet off the ground. 
It would be impossible to push someone off from there. No! But, but let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Force had been shot in the right arm. Ah! And more importantly, Barry Hawthorne had a gun trained on him at point-blank range. Ugh! So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge. That is clearly impossible. Gah! Order, order, but what is the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? Did he just roar? Indeed, what do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Y yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had a gun and handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a ra raging river like that, that would have been suicide. Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident that you could handle the swift current, but even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, then what was it? What was so important that she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. This fact alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of the Eagle River. That's the diamond. Hit her with the diamond. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Barry bought up the mountain with her, the two million dollar diamond. <laughs> ah! No, no! It, it can't be! What do you mean, did you, Roar? Of course he did, of course. Yes, Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. The two million dollars, she was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Force to help her fake the kidnapping. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river, with the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Why, that's... that's simply ridiculous! Order, order, order! Y Your Honor, five years ago, the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon, and there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. Y you mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister Dahlia, and then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth, as she wrote in her note. That is what sealed Barry Hawthorne's fate. That is when you have your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. <laughs> uh, who's that laughing at a time like this? Forgive me, it's just hilarious. What, witness? Is that you? You amuse me, woman, Miss Mia Fey. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally, you have the evidence to back it up, don't you? Uh, evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14, I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. But, well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't prove, provide evidence to at least show that. Hmm. Well, Miss Fey? I... I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Fay, are are you stupid or something? Four-year-old frail Michelle Phelps. <laughs> Judge. I, I like how when the, something like this happens, all of the judges just kind of stare like, Oh! How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Hello. Yo, my little maple leaf! How are you today? I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. 
Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behaviour does raise certain suspicions. However, I'm forced to reject the assertions made by the defence. Of course you are. Is this it? Is it really over? <laughs> My petite maple leaf. <laughs> that girl has made a fool of me, and there's nothing I can do about it. Ha! Without evidence, the trial is over. Who decided that? M Mr. Armando. I'm confused. The judge called Dahlia his little maple leaf earlier. And I was like, when Fig gets here, that's what we can call her. That's what we've got to call her. But Mr. Armando, come on now, kitten. Haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. The testimony? On the day in question, Dahlia Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mr. Ford's stone car and then went to meet with him. Disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Y yes, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who is the one person who can testify to that demon woman's crimes? Well, Terry. Do you want a rundown of what's happened so far today, Fig? Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. A new witness? Yes, we would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant? There's only one person that can shed any further light on the situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo was Barry Hawthorne. Or whether it was, in fact, her younger sister Dahlia disguised as her. Could he not have uh, pushed her through the wires? Like, if she fell, she could have fallen through the wires? Yeah, I guess. I guess you're meant to think that's a little bit more meshed up than it looks in the photo. To make it, like, look like they wouldn't be able to. There, there are, like, smaller black ones going down from the top to the bottom wires as well. So I wouldn't put it past them to, like, want you to imagine that it is a much smaller gap than it seems in the picture. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all, and that person is Terry Falls. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what's your take on this? Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. So basically, if you remember from the other day when we started this, I... The guy that we're defending was um, accused of kidnapping and killing someone five years ago. What we've kind of proved is that, or he told us at the beginning of the stream, he told us that the kidnapping was planned, that him and Dahlia, who ended up being Melissa, um, the two of them planned it to take off with a two million diamond, two million pound dollar worth of diamond whatever whatever the diamond was worth two million is what i'm saying um and the sister the police officer was in on it so the kidnapping was a fake and also he got shot in the arm and then she jumped into the river therefore the murder was fake the, the murder never happened either but she betrayed him at that point both of the sisters did and he went down for her murder even though she was alive that's why we're talking about a kidnapping now and this is all to prove that she has a motive to kill her sister in the current murder, basically. So we've gone back five years to talk about the kidnapping slash not murder that he did. And he's on death row for it. To prove that, um... She orchestrated it all. Sorry, I'm getting my chicken out as well. I'm gonna have some of my chicken.
Wait a minute. As king, I can ban coffee. I have some real power here. With great power comes great responsibility to misuse your power and do what you want. You missed my coronation pick. Look at my shiny crown. It's actually shinier than the King's Crown, which doesn't actually have much to it. Coronation was actually kind of funny to watch. I quite enjoyed watching the coronation, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, one more bit of chicken left, guys, don't worry. got coronated today. That is why I'm the king. Weber of all people did the Queen's Queen music, you know? You've always been my- well, I was coronated today, right? Charles had nothing on my coronation. I was coronated in chicken. I got a family discount. What was it? It was, um... What? I can't remember. Oh my god. It's a song called Zerdik the Priest or something like that. Zerdik the Priest? Is that what it's called? I can't remember. What's the piece of music called? Zadok the Priest. That started and the whole of Twitter was like, Oh my god, it's the Champions League coming on! Because it's the, the Champions League use it. It was so funny. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. It is Handel, yeah, it is. It is. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. Defendant, you've uh, heard everything that's being said to, up to this point, yes? Uh, um, I don't believe it. No way. Dahlia died five years ago. Barry betrayed me. 
Mr. Falls, I don't know what she was, she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear, Daddy is very much alive, and you were used for two million dollars. That's not true. Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want the answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne, or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia, Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago, she promised. She promised never ever betray each other. Champions League Anthem is composed by Tony Britton. It's got a very similar, um entrance to it because i was sat there like i know this i know this i've heard this before you know and then i was like of course i probably heard it before i did classical music as a gcse I, i've probably heard it a million fucking times at this point and then like i saw the champions league thing i was like no it is football i i heard it because of football but it's, very, it's got a very similar beginning to it and a very similar build up five years ago she promised she promised never ever betray each other terry Dahlia, it, it's true. You are alive. You don't trust me anymore. That makes me sad. Tell the truth, the real truth. I, I believed in you. I shouldn't need to say it. You should already know. But there is one thing that I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. Dahlia? I will allow Mr. Falls to testify once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls, yours will be the final testimony in this trial. Witness! Ja! Eek! I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> what water, but please, water. Um Can't talk, need water. Ha. Oh well, I guess I'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitterer than hell itself. Ha! And we believe this man is a two-time murderer. <clears throat> that day, 4pm, I stopped the car. I was in front of Bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on Bridge. I watched my car from Bridge. I never put no body in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked, then she left. That was... That was Valerie. Not my Dahlia. Mr. Forge, you're covering for her. Do you think she would cover for you? That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. Well then, Miss Faye, please proceed with your cross-examination. Is this how you want it to end, Mr. Falls? Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence. There's only one person who can stop it. You, kitten. I think. <laughs> I think. He trusts me, guys. 100%. He trusts me. According to the note, the meeting was supposed to take place at 4.30. You certainly arrived early, didn't you? It was raining, already dark too. You waited on the bridge for 30 minutes? Mr. Falls, Eagle Mountain, that spot, strong, strong memories. Why did you just cl climb up? Could it be he's hiding something here? You were quite early, so you waited on the bridge, correct? Yeah, I like waiting. I'm used to it. I'm sure he is. Deborah Boy waited five years to ask a single question to find out why a woman betrayed him. To him, 30 minutes must have been like a blink of the eye. You were watching the car. That bridge, other side is broken. Nobody can come from there. So I was watching car. Huh, what else were you expecting him to do? I suppose that's the obvious thing to do, but... Something's bothering me. I'm getting the feeling of contradiction. I wonder what's on the other side of the broken bridge anyway. No one lives there. There's a small shrine up in the mountain, but that's it. Anyway, nobody came. No car, nothing. Mr. Falls, think carefully now. Are you certain that it was Barry Hawthorne? Uh, uh, uh. I never lie. It, it's the truth. It was Bowery. I remembered her face. Wait a minute. If you have remembered her face, then why did you make her wear a scarf as identification? Uh, sorry. I told a little lie. But the woman I met, she was different from the woman standing here now. She was different. It was Valerie. What did you talk to her about anyway? 
Mr. Falls. Barry told the truth about the kidnapping five years ago. She said someone needed to take the blame for it. That was all I could think to do. She said that. That's why she lied. Got me the death penalty. And were you satisfied with that answer, witness? Dahlia died. It was my fault. But I don't really remember. Maybe I did. Maybe I did push her in. It don't matter no more. Either way, my Dahlia, my sweet teen angel, dead. You just saw that she isn't dead. After Valerie talked to me on the bridge, nothing left to live for. How can you be so sure? It was raining at the time and sunset that day was 5 o'clock. It would have already been pretty dark on that mountain at 4.30. Please, Mr. Force, this is your last chance. You've already taken a fall once for something you didn't do. That woman. It wasn't Dahlia. Stop right there. What more needs to be said? Hmm. Even if it means the death penalty, even if it means taking the blame for murder, you'll still do whatever is necessary to protect her, won't you, Mr. Falls? I know it's obvious, but he's clearly lying. He's been cursed by Dahlia Hawthorne. He'll probably go to his grave still believing in her. Mr. Falls, even if you can show he's lying, the poor guy will still be cursed. You still have to point out the contradiction anyway. That's the curse of being a defense lawyer, I guess. So what one was it that... Was it this one? No car, nothing. Watch my car from a bridge. I never put nobody in that car. Wait a minute. Wait. That kind of happened because she was on the bridge first, right? Addiction. So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? She waited on the bridge. You're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well then, I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? Uh? Uh? What? Well, <laughs> oh, I would love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo, it's perfectly clear. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one on the end of the bridge, right? But, but that's the victim at the end of the bridge. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. I'm not going to make those noises. You don't need to hear me make those noises. Um, Mr. Falls? Please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. I got there around four o'clock. It's true. I... I had somewhere to go. A special place. Did you go to this special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah, it's an old temple about 50 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. We sw swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought a memento to represent our love. A memento? Five years ago, I hid it under the base of tree there. Oh my god! Oh my fucking god! It's a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I went to get. This little bottle of a neck bottle on a necklace is your memento. It's quite charming, but it looks empty. Your Honor, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at four o'clock, but he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. Ugh! With that much time, Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. N no! Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. I've still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it. Uh. Huh? Mr. Falls? But that's enough, please. What, witness? I, I promised her five years ago, if it ever happens that we can't trust each other no more, then we're supposed to drink bottle. Uh, but no, stop the trial. Your Honor, we need a recess. I, I was stupid, couldn't keep promise. So I did it. I drank this. No, we were so close, just a little more. 
I was going to prove your innocence. No, don't want that. Don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill Sweet Dahlia again. Mr. Falls. Mr. Uh, Armando. That thanks for the coffee. Wow. Wow. He, he actually fucking killed himself. That, I wasn't expecting that. I, I'm kind of shocked. Also, did I actually thank you for the 32 month resub fake? I can't remember if I actually thanked you or just started going on about you being a maple leaf. And so my first trial ended suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners, only losers. Thank you for the 32 month resub at tier 3. Thank you so much. I ended up with my wound that cut so deep into my soul, I thought it'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. But one person. The true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne. She left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonically sweet face. <gasps> Unforgivable, that witch. But Mr. Armando, we were so close to the truth, it was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Don't cry, kitten. You're gonna make me make my coffee all salty. I I knew it. I kn knew I wasn't cut out for this. Mia, don't you get it? You can't cry yet. Oh my god. Oh my god. What's going on in this case? The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over, M Mr. Armando. No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time. Then you file them away and eventually forget them. One year later, in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. Yep. Yep, I remembered that. I'll cry into this coffee, Fick. Don't you worry. Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. It was finally all over. At least, that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. Yo, 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 we did it! Another case down! I mean, this series is ripe with cases where someone's sole motive is revenge. Oh, is this the last one of this game? Is this the last episode? Are we pretty much done now? Clean not everyone can forget. Yep, yep. To be fair, a lot of, like, crimes are done in revenge and shit like that. So, like, yeah, no, not all people will forget. <laughs> It'd be nice to believe that people would forget, but they, they don't. They don't. This is the final case coming up, yep. Oh, nice! But no more Ace Attorney? Well, I need to finish off... I need to finish off Hollow Knight after this. So, as I said before, I'm not gonna lie, Avia and Leo, they can't come to these streams because they haven't played the games before. So it kind of got a bit, like, sad that a load of people that usually come can't come to my sa um, Saturday streams. So I wanted to get this done when he's gone. She's not gone, but she's not here in the morning, so... I don't care. I don't care. But yeah, um... 
we need to finish Hollow Knight after this. And then after Hollow Knight, I'm going to do DMC because that was Leo's redeem. Regardless of whether he's talking to me again or not by then. That, that was his redeem, so we'll be going to, we're going to be doing that. And then after that, I might do prof some Professor Layton. Oh, wait a minute. I have another fictional game to play, don't I? Do I have another fictional game to play? Where's my thing? The Pokemon game. I have to do Pokemon. I have to do Pokemon. I might do Pokemon on Sundays, though. We might do a little bit of Pokemon on Sundays and then transition into doing some golf or something. Because the the ultimate goal is to do a couple episodes or a couple games of Professor Layton and then do the Professor Layton and Ace Attorney crossover. I do want to do other Ace Attorney ones. I just feel bad because my favorite people